Mark here at the Action Figuratorium, and this is a episode where we're going to talk about photography. Specifically, I have gotten a pair of these Rhea Bright Sticks. These are USB charged uh, lights. They uh, come in a pair, and uh, I'm going to be doing a review of these as they pertain to photographing the toys. So stick around. Okay, so these uh, Rhea Bright Sticks, these are interesting dogs. They are pretty light overall, uh, but also heavy enough to where they don't feel cheap. They feel well made. These are specifically designed for photography and film, which means they're going to be flicker free, at least for most of the, um, the average frames per second that person's going to be shooting in. They have a black area that looks like a handle, uh, so it looks kind of like a sword. You're supposed to grip it like that. But it also has a, uh, if you can see that, it's a, it's a mount. So you can screw it on top of the stand, and it can sit there. You can uh, have a pair of them on stands. And immediately when I saw these, I thought that, um, that these would be a great sort of poor man's ring light, that you could just turn them on and hold them right there, and you maybe put one on either side of a person's face and just slowly kind of drag them, start, start outward and drag them forward so that the, uh, the light comes this way and that the two meet sort of in the middle and maybe just a little bit of, tiny bit of overlap, but you don't want to like overexpose the front. You want to get it real even and you can do that with two of these. These uh, both recharge with USB, I think it's type C, the little guy and they do not run while charging so if you buy some of these and you take them to a real photography gig or a real video gig and you think well i'm just going to plug them in and uh, just run them off of ac it's not going to happen it's not going to happen you're going to be disappointed with the results when you're sitting there waiting for these things to charge they don't seem to charge fast or slow Nothing really new about that uh, in terms of electronics. You know, things always seem to be getting faster and faster, but of course they keep making the batteries bigger and bigger, so it takes longer and longer. But they're not too bad to charge up. I think that they run down if you don't use them. That is, if they just sit around for a week, you should probably charge them up, even if you haven't used them uh, since the last time you charged them. I would charge them before I took them to a gig. The interface on it is pretty simple. There's three buttons. So the main button is an on off and uh, I've just turned it on. Uh, if you hold it down, it will turn off. So on and then they, they have an assortment of colors. Right now you can see green is on. And as we scroll through the button, all right, uh, there are two colors of white. There is a uh, daylight, which is a blue light. And then down from that, there is an incandescent, a yellow light. I like to use the yellow light when I'm photographing people's faces. I think it just makes people's faces look more lifelike, more real, less like a d digital zombie than the blue light. And when I do those Indiana Jones shots, I really like to use um, the yellow light to get that kind of Raiders of the Lost Ark glow that everything had that torchlight uh, limestone pyramid block color throughout the whole movie. I think that that's real sort of a, a cool aesthetic with like the brown clothing. I think it works really well. Also on the interface is two arrows. There is a uh, uh, dimming ability where you can dim it down or uh, punch it up to full brightness. Also, these come with uh, some remotes, some little tiny, super cheap, super cheap plastic remotes. You 
end up clicking them a hundred times to get the thing to go. You put the remote next to it. It's that kind of thing. They're not very good. But the, light, the lights themselves seem real solid. So what we're going to do is we're going to take them over to the bench where I'm going to do some test shots on a couple of figures. We've got an old friend, Dr. Jones, who I just mentioned earlier, and uh, he's taking on a new student. He's taking on uh, Laura Croft. So here we are on the stage, which is uh, lit from behind. The psych is lit in the back there, and there's lighting on key lighting on the front from one side. I just put my hand in front of the light and then there's another light over here. And what we are going to do is we are going to go to blue initially, daylight on our wands. And we're going to kill off these lights. All right, so there's currently no key lights on these guys. And, um, and I will be doing photos um, of these figures. And I will integrate the pics, the photo pics, into the video for you guys. So at this point, without the key lighting, it's pretty impossible to to get Indiana Jones in focus. There's just not enough light. So we're going to start off with just a simple up light and uh, a simple key light in front. And you can see that it really makes the face pop on the Tomb Raider. But the hat is getting in the way of Indy's face. You can also see where makeup comes in to make people's faces look, uh, in movies, the same color for lighting purposes. I guess that's what I think. All right, so these guys need to be together. All right, we have one of these as an up light. One of these. And I'm just holding this with my hand, as you can see here, while I'm snapping pics. And we will check some of these out. I need to, uh, I got my ISO pretty close. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kill my, my backlights. So what we're looking at now is just, just the sticks, just the sticks. And we're going to try and frame up uh, this is not easy to... I'm going to try and frame these guys up and light them with the stick, just holding it as best that I can, and see what kind of shots we get. Now, I think it would be interesting to go to our yellow, which is just the next click over. And if it feels a little overlit, on the bottom, which it does, we'll dim it down. And I don't have to necessarily put it directly under, or I can just put it down, as you can see there. So you see this lighting scheme. And let me, um, let me kind of push in a little bit. And so I'm just using this as like a poor man's ring light at this point. I almost wish I had autofocus on so I didn't have to bother with this, but and uh, and that's just the start. You can uh, you can move this in multiple, just holding on to it and working the camera. If I was to uh, If I was to um, put this on a tripod, I would have an extra arm free to work this. That ISO needs to go the other way. Let's take it to 16. Anyway, 
is here's a couple of my shots and um, and this is just lighting them with the sticks this is not doing anything else this is just one stick on the ground and one stick overhead um, but you can easily set these up on either side and in fact what I think we're gonna do is let's throw these guys up on a couple of stands shall we down to half with the dimmer Um, we can also try throwing a different color on them. This can go double blue. You can see how much darker the Indiana Jones figure is. This may want to uh, go full up if we can. We may want to do something with, oh, maybe you do one side blue, one side red. And, uh, and that way you get kind of a a natural kind of stereo field effect going on and with all these it's always good to just every once in a while move your character around into some kind of different position uh, these little wristbands I got off of Barbie I think we're just gonna go with one the one that would be her watch and uh, in Indiana Jones he always could use the hat and anytime you can put the figures closer to one another the Psy girls they always tend to like kind of bend at the knee so we got sort of a hoot nan party going on Anyways, sort of interesting figures. It's a photograph. So the Rhea Bright Sticks are pretty inexpensive, really good lighting tools for this size of work. Action figures. You can put them on stands. You can lay them down. You can hold them. You can get close further away. They have dimming abilities. They're heavy enough to where they don't feel cheap. They're light enough to where they're not a, a burden. Um, you shouldn't be afraid to pick one up and move it around to get the best light and lighting effects for it. Um, we picked up a couple of these used for the studio here in Milwaukee, and I thought I would just check them out and see how well they do. There are, of course, plenty of other companies out there who are making similar type of uh, small LED type of photo lights that will dim and switch through but I just thought I'd let you know that I have tried these ones out myself personally and they seem to work pretty good they seem to work you know about what you'd expect and they're real easy to use and they seem to you know get the job done now as far as how long they last um, I know they come with these little bags the uh, hardly a case though I would definitely if I was you I would definitely get some type of a of a of a harder case a harder shell to put them in especially if you're going to go out taking them to a gig they are of course your lights and so they're worth protecting but I think they can handle it I don't know how long the batteries last on these because I haven't spent a lot of time using them to know exactly how much uh, juice you get out of a full charge and it's hard to say exactly how long it takes to charge other than to say that it does take hours rather than minutes from what I've seen when you uh, do plug them in you get like a little kind of a pulse and uh, I think the faster the pulse the more it's charging so as I recall I put it on for a couple hours before it really started to um, almost fill up I would say expect at least three hours on the uh, charger before you should uh, use them at full force and if they're sitting for a long time in between use, you're definitely going to want to charge them before you take them out. 
but because they are chargeable, you can do interesting things with them. I don't know yet if they can go underwater. I mean, even like partially underwater, just like the, the, the light part. I think it might be cool if you stuck something like, you know, um, really shallow water and uh, got a camera down there and then st stuck one of these lights. I don't know. That seems like it could be a cool use for one of these things. So maybe there'll be like an outdoor version uh, take on this product. But until the meantime, uh, you know, everyone needs to stay frosty and I'll catch you guys in the next one.